In this video, we're going to introduce ourselves to the idea of photoelectron spectroscopy. It's a way of analyzing the electron configuration of a sample of a certain type of atom. And so what you'll often see, and you might see something like this on an exam, is a photoelectron spectrum that looks something like this. And so the first question is, well, what's even going on? How is this generated? Well, I'm not going to go into the details, but the big picture is, the analysis will be done by taking a stream of that atom. And so that atom, there's an atom stream going in one direction. And then the other direction, let me label this. So that's, that's the atoms that we're trying to analyze. And then the other direction, you send high energy photons that are going to bombard those atoms. Photons. Now these photons are high enough energy. In fact, they're typically x-ray photons. So that when they collide, the photons are high enough energy to overcome the binding energy of even the core electrons. And as those electrons get knocked out, they move away and they enter into a magnetic field that will deflect those electrons and then make them hit a detector. And so you can imagine the electrons that are closer to the nucleus those have the highest binding energy. And so more of that energy from the photon is going to be used to knock it off. So less of it is going to be there for the kinetic energy. So those closer electrons aren't going to get as far. And the outer electrons, those have the lowest electron binding energy. They're the easiest to knock off. And so you have more of the photon's energy is going to be transferred into kinetic energy. And so they're going to get further away and they're going to hit the detector at a further point. And so one way to view the photoelectron spectrum is it gives you a sense of roughly how many electrons have various binding energies. And you can see that the binding energy increases as we go to the left. Now the reason why this makes sense, the binding energy is inversely proportional to how much kinetic energy these electrons have as they actually get knocked off. And so this spike on our spectrum at the extreme left, these are the innermost electrons. And then these would be the electrons that have the next highest binding energy, and then the next highest binding energy. And so we can analyze this to actually come up with the electron configuration of this mystery element right over here. What do you think that would be? Pause this video and try to think about that. Well, as I mentioned, this spike right over here would correspond to detecting the innermost electrons. And so the innermost electrons are the 1s electrons. And we know that those aren't the only electrons because there's electrons that have lower binding energies. And so we know that we would have filled up that innermost shell. And so we know that they have two 1s electrons. And then we can then think that this next spike, that's going to be the 2s electrons. And we have more electrons than that, so we must have filled up the 2s subshell. And then this next spike, this looks like 2p. And the reason why this really makes a lot of sense is, notice the detector is detecting more electrons there. And we also have more electrons. And so that must have been filled. And that makes sense. And actually the way this was constructed, it's not always going to be this perfect, but you can see you have roughly three times as many 2p electrons as 2s electrons, which makes sense. The 2p subshell can fit six electrons, 2s subshell fits two. So this next spike is going to be the next highest energy shell, which is going to have a lower binding energy. It's, easy to knock those, it's easier to knock those electrons off. And so this looks like it's going to be the 3s2. And then this next spike, this looks like 3p6. And then that one gets completely filled. And we have one more spike after that. And that spike seems to get roughly the same number of electrons as all of the other s subshells, and we know from the Aufbau principle that the next we would fill is 4s, and it looks like there's two electrons there because this spike is about the same as the other filled s subshells. And so just like that, we're able to use the photoelectron spectrum to come up with the electron configuration of this mystery element. Its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. And what element has this electron configuration? Well, we've worked on it in other videos, but I can get my periodic table of elements out. 
And we can see, let's see, 1s2 gets us to helium. Then you have 2s2, 2p6 gets us to neon. 3s2, 3p6 gets us to argon. And then 4s2 gets us to calcium. So our mystery element is calcium. And if someone were to ask about valence electrons, that would be this outermost spike right over here. The spike of electrons with the lowest binding energy. They have the lowest binding energy because they're the furthest out there. They are the easiest to knock off. And because they're the easiest to knock off, more of that photon energy is left over after overcoming the binding energy that gets converted into kinetic energy. So those electrons get deflected further. Now another interesting question that you might sometimes be asked is, if this is the photoelectron spectrum for calcium, what would be the photoelectron spectrum for the element right before calcium, for potassium? Pause this video and think about that. How would the photoelectron spectrum look different? Well, the difference between calcium and potassium is that potassium only has one electron in the 4s subshell, while calcium has two electrons in the 4s subshell. So the way it would look different if we were, instead of thinking about calcium, if we're thinking about potassium, it would look something like this. It would be half as high. So that's what the photoelectric spectrum for potassium would look like. Instead of this being 4s2, this would be 4s1 here. And so you can see when you have two electrons, you get about that high. And now when you have one electron, you get about that high.